Last lecture we have seen <coughs> second derivative if it is positive the nature of the function and if it is negative what is the nature of the function connection between derivative and convexity or concavity of the function we have done if and only if result on that then we have learned the Darboux theorem. Now it is time to use all the tricks and techniques that we have developed in differential calculus to sketch the function very quickly, analyze it and use it whenever you are required to use it. Find out the different properties of the given function by graphical method. So if we could sketch the function very easily with all the available tools that we have right now, it will be easy to answer the questions. Okay, so our job today is to try and sketch, uh, not using any software, but by using our tools. How hot? What is the nature of the function? Graphically, how it looks like? What are the important? things that we need to note on that particular graph, etc. We will start learning. So let us start with example, which is the simplest possible example that I can give now. Example one. Sketch y is equal to x minus 1 into x minus 2. Now I will demonstrate this first because all of you are aware of this graph and there is nothing really you can do about it. But what is expected out of you in the subsequent problems is, suppose this point is one, this point is two, you are aware that the minimum is going to be at three by two, graph is going to be standard parabola opening up, passing through one comma two with minimum at three by two, right? So you need to then uh, write it like this. This x coordinate of this is three by two. Corresponding value of the function over here is minus one by four. This is your f of x. Okay, so this is important point. This is important point. This is important point nature. So this much decoration you have to do. If there are any asymptotes, you have to show those asymptotes. Now here maybe you can say that this is moving to plus infinity when lower values of x are taken. This is also going to plus infinity when higher values of x are. So if this is the function, then presently you need not have to do any analysis. But you can find this out. If suppose this is x square minus 3x plus 2, y dash is equal to 2x minus 3. You equate it to 0, and therefore you get x is equal to 3 by 2. So we knew that minus b by a minus b by 2a minus b by 2a was your x coordinate of vertex. We uh, knew that by the theory of quadratic equation, but now using theory of differential calculus, this is the place where the tangent is going to be horizontal. And it's a polynomial, so it's a continuous and differentiable function. Therefore, it is easy to find out the point where it attains its uh, minimum because y double dash is equal to 2 which is greater than zero. And therefore, this is going to be local. So everything is falling in place. Whether we knew it by earlier theory or not, it works. I mean, differential calculus will give you precisely the same results if we knew the results. And differential calculus will help you to give you the results if you were earlier not able to find out these results. Okay, and therefore, your job now, my job is to give you different functions. Your job is to sketch and then my job is to check your sketches. So I need not have to tell you anything about sketch now. You have to complete the sketch. 
you should not be saying that this is x coordinate i don't know what is y coordinate you need to decorate everything in that particular sketch and make it complete okay example number 2 y is equal to x minus 1 x minus 2 x minus 3 your time starts now now this is cubic and last lecture only we have seen how cubic behaves i think okay so now let me now tell you the moment you get function what you should analyze first you find out critical points critical points critical points are the points where function becomes either zero or not defined uh or critical points where it cuts y axis or something else anything special which you can uh, find out as far as this function so critical points in this case basically the critical points are x is equal to 1 to 3 that is how we start then maybe you have to differentiate this and find out what is y dash what is this cubic y is equal to it is, is it better to make it cubic and then differentiate x cube what is sum of the roots minus 6 x square in the saha in don akra plus 11 x in the saha minus Plus six, k minus six, ten, minus six. The other one, minus the minus one, right? So if you put x is equal to one, you get zero. If you put x, zero. okay. So this is our cubic. What is y dash? Y dash is three minus twelve x plus eleven. You equate it to zero. To get x is equal to and y is two values of x. Those two values of x are going to be one minimum, one maximum. Now, because it is a simple function at the moment, you need not have to do any other things than directly sketching. You may find out by putting x is equal to zero, you are getting minus six. So your y, this curve will go like this, like this. And we will go to infinity like this. It will go to minus infinity. Leading coefficient is positive. Therefore, signature is like this. If leading coefficient is negative, signature of cubic is going to be like this. So this point is one. This point is two. This point is three. And this point is three. Three. Now uh, two minus. Now three. Okay, and this is minus four, zero comma minus four. That is what is the graph of this cube. Okay, samastha ka sahi hai maan. Okay, so far. Example number three. Y is equal to x minus two into x minus one bracket. Correct. In this case, the graph is looking like this. At one, it is standing. At two, it is cutting. This is one. 
this is 5 by 3 and this is 2. Now, here I have that. Another critical point could be point of inflection. So, in this graph, there is a point of inflection. So, this part of the curve is concave. From here, if you draw any chord, concave. If you draw any chord here, it is convex. So, there will be some point here in between where the function is changing from concavity to convexity. Understand this. And therefore, you need to know that point because that is also yet another important point on this curve. Find out point of inflection, x coordinate of point of inflection. Okay, the point of inflection in this case is 4 by, that is where your convexity ends, a concavity ends and convexity starts. Example number 4. Now, I want to make it a point here that you have to draw this curve very carefully. Now, x axis is a tangent at x is equal to 1 and therefore, if you zoom my sketch, you will see that it looks like tangent. It looks like tangent. Okay, you have to learn the technique of sketching it almost correct, almost correct. I mean, uh, some of you have drawn sketch like this, which you have to be a little careful about. This is not correct. This is not differentiability is lost there. Then almost from 1 to 2, the distance should be equal. This distance is equal to this. So you have to maintain some basic discipline while drawing these sketches. Okay. Example number 4. If I pass y is equal to absolute value of x plus 3 into x plus 1. Okay, so almost all of you have drawn this graph, found out critical points, differentiated. Now, this is as good as two functions to the left of minus 3, it will behave differently and to the right of minus 3, it is going to. So, this, if you want to deal with absolute value side, you have to take two cases. If x is less than minus 3, it is going to be minus x minus 3 into x plus 1. That is what is going to be your function. And if x is greater than equal to minus 3, y is equal to x plus 3 and x plus 1. That is how your function is going to be. So, if to the left of minus 3, what you have sketched is, see, one point I want to make it over here is, suppose this is your graph. This is minus 1, minus 2 and minus 3. It is a quadratic equation. So, leading coefficient is negative. So, opening down and hence the graph is going to be like this. Now, when we are dealing with the graphs and using extremely powerful tools to draw those graphs, uh, maybe when we were learning quadratic equation in 9th standard, this or this I mean, you will not draw like this because this is opening up. So, this is anyway wrong. In quadratic equation also it is wrong. And in now advanced tools also this is wrong. It has to be concave. The graph has to be concave. Now, few students have drawn it like this. 
like this straight line. It is not straight line to the left of minus 3. It has to be a parabola opening down. So you have to show the concavity of the curve to the left of minus 3. Then only it is correct. Otherwise, this is wrong and this is also wrong. Very important point. Moreover, in the subsequent examples, I will explain you why this nature is going to be important. Okay. But barring that, it is definitely not tangent at this point. Therefore, you are you are coming, coming and hitting that x-axis like this, sharp edge. And from there, you are following this parabola, which is opening up simple. And so on. Okay, now it is difficult to draw it on this template because it is too smooth. But in notebook, you should be able to really draw the sketch properly. Now, let me just completely then violate because that is what is our correct graph. Okay, this is the correct graph, remaining two are wrong. And if you are not paying attention towards this, then you might end up writing different answers if the answers are dependent on the graphs. It is concave to the left of minus 3. Very important. Next, the number, pass number. Example 5. Y is equal to x cube minus 12x minus 16. This problem, now you do not have the factors, ready factors with you, therefore you have to find out y dash. Factorize it, equate it to 0, get the critical points, x is equal to minus 2, x is equal to 2. These are critical points and it is a typical leading coefficient positive cubic. Therefore, minus 2 plus 2 and your point of inflection happens to be 0. So y double dash if you find out it is equal to 6x equal to 0. x is equal to 0 is your point of inflection. So the graph is to be decorated first. This is minus 2, this is plus 2. Now 32 is going to be too far, so you can approximately say that this is minus 16, maybe this is minus 32. So you have this point as a minimum, this point as maximum, and you have a point of inflection over here. So from here you should draw the curve which is convex. Convex down, so concave up. Okay. From here, you should draw the curve which is convex up. You can find out where it intersects. Y value again becomes zero. If possible, good number, then find out other value. Then, I mean, this is going to be like this. This one, this arm. Difficult for me to draw, but see, like this or like this will make a lot of difference. Venture. Therefore, from here to any point on x axis, it is. See, you are not going to get one more point of inflection. That is the important thing that you need to understand. For every greater value of x, the graph has to continue remain convex. For every value less than minus 2, it should continue remain concave. That is important. Nowhere, no, you know, because these points are not in front of us, after some time, suddenly it will not go like this because we do not have any other point of inflection. It has to be well behaved after that. Whatever are the complications, they are in front of us. We are 
jotting them down we are finding them where are wherever some critical points are there whatever is happening but then if we are not bothered about what is happening to the minus 2 it is the graph is taking care of itself i mean if you zoom the graph is going to be like this it is going to be like this it is going to be like this for every negative value that you take because if it changes the nature then point of inflection will come if it becomes on the vex instead of concave then point of inflection will come and that point of inflection should be available here we don't have any other point of inflection therefore after this point after whatever this point is the function has to be convex throughout after to the left of minus 2 it has to be concave throughout we don't have any other fluctuation or point of inflection that on these are some important things that i am trying to tell you and are going to be very very useful problem number 6 y is equal to minus 3 by 2 x is to 4 plus 4 x cube plus 3 x square minus 12 x now you considering all the points that we have discussed so far sketch this function this is a fourth degree equation which is given to you so its first derivative is going to be cubic but i think the coefficients are adjusted in such a way that you should get factorization of cubic very easily so you will end up getting critical points where maximum minimums are going to be there by equating y dash is equal to 0 and those points are x is equal to minus 1 x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 2 these are the three points where either it will be maximum or minimum now as y dash is cubic y double dash is going to be quadratic quadratic and therefore you will end up having two points of inflection now leading coefficient is negative and it is a fourth degree polynomial therefore the sketch is going to be something like this now minus 1 it is going to be maximum at that point the y value comes out to be 9.5 this is maximum point if you put x is equal to 0 y becomes 0 so it will pass through this point and i think that is one of the points of inflection also if my graph is correct then at 1 it is minimum the value is minus 6.5 then second maximum is at 2 value is minus 3 so there will be one point of inflection here somewhere which you can find out so it is going to go like this from here to here from here to here it is going to go like this okay mistake from here to here it is going to be called q okay So minus one, one minus a plus. That is what is going to be the nature. So far we are dealing with polynomials, which are easy and friendly functions, continuous everywhere, differentiable everywhere. So now let me give you a simple one, which I think we have done it earlier. Before differential calculus. Example seven. Y is equal to x minus one upon x minus two. Sketch this quickly. 
let me explain you this graph in two ways. One first way is without using differential calculus. This is what we have already plotted. This is equal to x minus 2 plus 1 upon x minus 2. It is equal to 1 plus 1 upon x minus 2. So, y is equal to 1 upon x. We know it is rectangular hyperbola. Right? Then y is equal to 1 upon x minus 2. So, when it is x minus 2, you are subtracting 2. You shift the graph to the right by 2. So the transformation will be now dotted line here or x is equal to 2 because then the function is undefined. So 2 is not there in the domain. Therefore, this is where the graph is going to shift like this. When it is y is equal to 1 upon x minus 2. And the third iteration is y is equal to 1 plus 1 upon x minus 2. So you are adding 1 to each value of y. Therefore, pan this graph up by 1 unit. And therefore, the graph will look like this. This is your y-axis, this is your x-axis, dotted line at y is x is equal to 2, dotted horizontal line at 1, and therefore this is what is going to be your curve. It is going to be hyperbola only. Something like this. Right? Now, for x is equal to 0, x is equal to 2, assume total. So, this is the dotted line. If we put, when do we get y value equal to, when we put x is equal to 0, we get y value equal to minus half. So, x is equal to 0, y value is, this is half. Okay, limit x minus 1 upon x minus 2, x tends to plus infinity is equal to 1. So this is going to be asymptotic at x is equal to 1. Limit x tends to minus infinity, still it is 1. So that is the line which is going to be. So we are not doing the analysis using uh, limits etc. But this is what is the final curve using 2D geometry okay, and its transformations. Now let us see if we can get exactly same using differential calculus. So first thing that we will do in the differential calculus is to find out y dash. y dash is equal to v into derivative of u minus u into derivative of v upon v square, if we equate it to 0, we don't get any x. No x gives you y dash 0. So there is no minimum or maximum or there is no horizontal tangent. No. Moreover, y dash if you really calculate this, denominator is something square. So it is minus 2 plus 1. So minus 1. Y dash is minus 1. Sir, minus 1 upon x minus 2 plus square. Minus 1 upon x minus 2 bracket square. So, what I'm trying to say is this is always less than zero. So no matter where you draw tangent on this curve, the slope has to be negative. That is the information which we get here. Okay. And therefore, uh, this is one information. Now, critical points. Critical points by looking at this function, 
x is equal to 2 is a critical point x is equal to 0 y is equal to half yet another critical point now in this critical point business what is the extent what is the extremes extremes you are supposed to check therefore limit x minus 1 upon x minus 2 x tends to infinity plus infinity is equal to 1 x tends to minus infinity is equal to 1 therefore the graph has to be asymptotic for the line y is equal to 1 y is equal to 1 asymptote okay so this is the information that we are getting second derivative I mean, if there is no maximum minimum and if the slope of tangent is always negative, there is no question of point of inflection. Now, after collecting so much of information by doing analysis, analysis means using calculus, now we can take it for sketching, sketching y-axis, x-axis, critical point x is equal to 2, where the function is undefined, therefore vertical dotted line. Now another thing that you can do here analysis is limit x minus 1 upon x minus 2 as x tends to 2 plus from positive side. If x is 2 plus then what will happen? This is going to be 1 if you put x is equal to 2. So this is going to be 1 upon 2 plus and that quantity is going to be positive but tending to zero therefore this will go to plus infinity do you understand limit x tends to 2 minus x minus 1 upon x minus 2 so if you come from the left of 2 this quantity is going to be small but will be negative in sign and this is going to be yet similar to 1 and hence this will be minus infinity sorry minus infinity so to the left of x is equal to 2, it is going to plus infinity, to the right of x is equal to, to the left of x is equal to 2, it is going to minus infinity, to the right of x is equal to 2, it is going to be plus infinity, uh, y is equal to 1 is also an asymptote, so we should draw that also. Okay. And now you really start sketching. To the right of 2, plus infinity. So, you should come down like this asymptote and it is going to plus infinity asymptote no here your convexity concavity going to change understand this uh, as x tends to positive infinity now will y is equal to 1 be ever achieved will y is equal to x minus 1 upon x minus 2 is equal to 1. For what value of x will you achieve y is equal to 1? I mean you will not achieve y is equal to 1 for any value of x. Any value of x unless x is tend to, tending to plus infinity or minus infinity. It is asymptote. So the nature of the graph is going to be like this and I am drawing it convex. This is also convex so that the slope is negative. You understand? And now, therefore, we do not have any special point between these two. And hence, you can go ahead and say that the right hand side of the graph is going to be convex like this asymptote. This dotted line is not going to get intersected by this black curve anywhere down the line. This vertical green line will not be getting intersected by this black curve anywhere upstairs, anywhere. But every time they will come closer as you take closer value of. So this is the right hand side graph. Left hand side, again it is asymptotic at x is equal to minus infinity, extending to minus infinity, it is asymptotic. So it will be concave like this, but asymptotic. And to the left of 2, it is going to negative infinity. So the graph is going to be like. Now, 
where it will intersect x axis where it will intersect y axis this is what is in information that we have therefore you can make use of that information and make sure that it intersects here first intersect is going to be here so concave 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 going concave becoming like this and going down you can find out this value also when will y be equal to 0 y will be equal to 0 when x is equal to 1 so at 1 it becomes 0 this is half that is the end of the story so using calculus we can finish this graph using 2d geometry we can draw this graph but this is more powerful because beyond certain functions we will not be able to deal with this however this is going to work for some more number of functions and not really the standard ones not part of asymptotes now see one point i want to make it clear here is suppose in this region in this quadrant anywhere the graph becomes like this concave okay and we have observed that there are no points of inflection that means this curve will come and intersect this line somewhere or the other this curve will go somewhere and intersect this vertical line somewhere or the other but it is not happening this line x is equal to 2 is not getting intersected any time y is equal to 1 is not getting intersected any time this nature of convex is also important and it is also i mean this fact that this these two lines are asymptotes makes it's sure that this has to be convex if it is concave anywhere it is bound to get intersected because there are no points of inflection it cannot change the nature and therefore it has to be convex in this quadrant it has to be concave because if it is convex in this quadrant it will go and intersect these two lines these two lines somewhere or the other down the line because there are no points of inflection this is what makes it very interesting because if we understand all these things as far as analysis is concerned then sketching and understanding the function well will happen and you will be able to solve problems very quickly let me give you the any doubts difficulties in this okay next sketch what is the problem number eight sketch number eight y is equal to 2x minus 3 upon x square minus 3x plus 2. Sketch. Sketch and decorate properly. Okay, we will discuss this graph in the next lecture. <coughs> now, and few more graphs also in the next lecture. Okay. Now let me stop recording. <coughs>